as one of the most surprising additions to the X-Men from Disney's latest X-Men 97 TV show. Morph has divided the internet. A super amazing shapeshifter, they can give the likes of Deadpool and Wolverine a run for their money, as far as the healing factor is concerned. So, how has Morph become Marvel's latest controversy? Well, he initially is a cis male superhero, but now he's been depicted as a non-binary individual. In this video, we'll explore the reasoning the creators have given for such a decision. But more importantly, we'll discuss Morph's origin and dive deep into his anatomy. Oh, and I'll be addressing him as he, because that's how he was conceived in the first place. As in, when they created the character. So I hope that's cool with you. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request for you. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. So thank you, let's begin. But when I'm through with you, your mind will never recover. Kevin Sidney, aka Morph Backstory Explored Morph, a mutant with the power to change his form, joined the X-Men and became close with Wolverine. Interestingly, even X-Men 97 is supposed to show an interesting bond between the two mutants. So Morph was meant to replace Thunderbird in X-Men, the animated series, because the creators didn't want to kill the show's only Native American character early on. Instead, they found inspiration in Changeling, a character who had died heroically, but changed his name to Morph due to a naming conflict with a DC Comics character called Beast Boy, who was sometimes called Changeling. During a mission against the Mutant Control Agency, Morph protected Wolverine from a Sentinel attack, but was left for dead by the team as they retreated under Cyclops' orders. Mr. Sinister found and healed Morph, then brainwashed him to seek revenge against the X-Men. Despite his initial hostility, Morph fought against his conditioning and helped the X-Men escape from Sinister, but chose not to rejoin them immediately, feeling he needed to resolve his personal issues first. Morph hid in a circus until Sinister found him again and took control. The villain then used him to attempt a kidnapping of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Although he tried to warn the X-Men, Sinister managed to kidnap Jean. In the Savage Land, Morph broke free from Sinister's influence with help from Xavier, fought against Sinister alongside the X-Men, and had the controlling device removed from his mind, which became his ticket to freedom. Morph, after being rescued, was taken to Muir Island for recovery, where the X-Men visited him, declared healthy, but with Moira's reservations. Morph insisted on rejoining the X-Men. His comeback mission against the Sentinels triggered PTSD, and he found himself paralyzed with fear. However, Morph pushed through his fear, destroyed Master Mold, saved Professor X, and disrupted the Sentinel operation. Concerned his PTSD would risk the team, he left the X-Men. He felt that he was not yet prepared to become a hero. When Professor X was attacked by Henry Gyrich, Morph stepped in once again. He impersonated the Professor on TV, calmed the mutants down, and effectively stopped them from assassinating humans. Only mere wrestlers. Did he say wrestlers? Wrestlers, my He's a powerful shapeshifter. Morph can change his shape to look like any human or semi-human being by altering his appearance, clothing, and even voice. So yeah, he's a super shapeshifter, and the precision with which he can resemble someone is just unequaled. Yeah, there are a few limitations when it comes to imitating the powers, but he can imitate pretty much everything else. Even the likes of Mystique can't imitate powers and abilities, but this guy can. If you didn't know, Mystique could only imitate a person's voice and appearance, and it was only after the Forever storyline that she could also alter her mass and alter her body or limbs into inorganic material. On the other hand, Morph can also turn into animals, possibly by pulling extra mass from another dimension. This was hinted at in the third episode of the second season of X-Men, the animated series. Morph can mimic parts of his body and replicate sounds. He can imitate specific features like Omega Red's tentacles and Wolverine's claws, but cannot match the material properties like the hardness of Wolverine's adamantium claws. In the show as well, Morph shows some awesome shape-shifting abilities when he turns into several mutants. He even transforms into a walking, talking Professor X when he has to chide Cyclops about his extremely boring nature that simply sucked the fun out of everything. However, the X-Men did not find this joke very amusing. As Morph, he participates in a battle in the first episode against Sentinels of Bolivar Trask. Nevertheless, speaking of the limitations of his abilities, Morph shifts his form and voice to mimic others, but doesn't gain their mutant abilities. His self-made weapons aren't as durable as real ones that belong to their real owners. What I mean to say is, he can imitate the claws of Wolverine, but those claws won't really be as strong and as durable as Wolverine's adamantium ones. Morph's claws would be rather brittle and weak. Similarly, any other powers and abilities that he imitates would follow suit. Does he have a healing factor? As Kevin Sidney, he can change his looks and voice to match anyone, with his costume adapting thanks to unstable molecules. 
It kind of tells me that apart from manipulating his own molecules, he has some degree of control over the molecules in his immediate surroundings, such as his clothes, as long as they're made out of unstable molecules that can be easily altered. Furthermore, his body has a Play-Doh-like quality that allows him to reattach severed limbs. So if you strike and sever his arm, rest assured that he can simply pick up the severed arm and fix it back. Once again, regular shapeshifters cannot really achieve this feat. I hope now you can see why I call him a super shapeshifter in the first place. His mutation gives him a high metabolism and makes him very hormonal. In Exiles issue 33, Sasquatch and Morph land in northern Canada to confront a super hostile Wolverine. You see, our man Logan was fresh from the Weapon X program and ready to attack. Heather and Kevin initially hold off Wolverine, until Morph is sliced in half. Yep, you heard that right, he's sliced in half. Meanwhile, Sasquatch fights back and injures Wolverine, but he retaliates by cutting her Achilles tendon. Despite her injury, Sasquatch manages to throw Wolverine away. Despite suffering the fate he did, Morph heals himself and then they try to escape. After reaching a cliff, they jump across, which created a gap Wolverine can't easily cross. To prevent Heather from bleeding out, Morph forms surgical clamps from his body and uses roots to stitch her up. As Wolverine approaches, Heather urges Morph to leave. When he refuses, she knocks him out and hides him under the pine needles to evade Wolverine. But why am I telling you all of this? Well, because he's capable of going through so many physical changes in such a quick succession, it causes an insurmountable level of hormonal changes within him. You see, he can even shapeshift into animals, which means that his hormonal physiology also gets imitated. Sure, he can get the strength of an elephant or a rhino if he changes into those beasts, but he may also get the testosterone levels of a raging bull elephant, or the estrogen levels of a fiercely protective rhino mom. Can you imagine what that might be like? It can't be. But I can smell him. Morph's here. Does he have any odor on him? Well, there exist conflicting accounts on this one. While Sasquatch notes that she can't smell him, Sabretooth once said he could feel Morph's distinct presence despite his ability to blend in. Like a sore thumb in a crowd, he called Morph. However, the generally accepted idea about his scent is that Morph cannot change his odor. It's the only thing he cannot change. However, it would take someone like Wolverine to really smell Morph's odor and differentiate it from someone else's. Is Morph non-binary? In X-Men 97, Morph, his character and appearance have actually evolved from his 1990s persona. From a dark-haired man, he now has a more ambiguous appearance with a featureless face, which more or less aligns with a non-binary identity. Obviously, this decision led to a wildfire of debates over the show's modern updates. However, the original series creators view this as a natural extension of Morph's abilities. Director Larry Houston, the man behind the X-Men animated series, equates shapeshifting with being non-binary, emphasizing that changing forms, including gender, are inherent to such characters. Eric Leewald highlighted Morph's past transformations into various characters, regardless of gender. So basically, according to him, Morph has had a non-binary nature from the start. In X-Men 97, Morph impersonates Jean Grey to unsettle Wolverine, and Professor X to annoy Cyclops. So if you think about it, Morph has already shown his fluid identity early on. The backlash to Morph's non-binary identity in X-Men 97 is seen by creators as a misunderstanding of the original show's intent, which they say aimed to promote acceptance and diversity. Julia Leewald and Lenore Zan, Rogue's voice actor, second this sentiment. In fact, they've shown a degree of shock and surprise at ongoing issues as far as acceptance is concerned. But hey, we can all have our own opinions, and we can agree to disagree in a free country, right? He has limited telepathic abilities. He has limited telepathic abilities, which Professor X enhanced in the original timeline. As a side effect, he also gained limited telekinetic abilities, but I've already spoken about this in some detail earlier, so there's no point in being repetitive. Can his powers get amplified? Morph's abilities got a boost when he and the energy mutant Proteus decided to work together. Initially, Morph used his shapeshifting to weaken Proteus by pretending to be Maestro and using a steel strip. However, Proteus took over Morph's body. Cosmic beings intervened and saw this merger as a power imbalance. They captured Morph, and Blink used the device to make Proteus believe he was Morph, which limited him to Morph's memories and abilities. Now, this allowed Proteus to stay with the Exiles and to aid in their mission without burning out like he did with previous hosts. How was this made possible? Well, all thanks to Morph's unique physiology. You see, Morph is a stamina sink and does not get exhausted easily. Proteus, while in Morph's form, also became immune to metal, a weakness of his original form. However, the control device was eventually destroyed, which risked the return of Proteus. Later in the comic, Proteus' power waned until he envisioned a being like himself offering power. The entity was Morph's true essence, which had been gaining strength all this while. 
Moore proposed a cohabitation in their shared body to maximize their potential for good. Proteus agreed, and the merger enhanced their combined abilities. He's deceptively smart. Kevin Sidney has a knack for acting and organizing covert operations. He uses advanced alien Siri weapons from Factor 3, including a ray gun. Despite his playful demeanor, Morph is quite intelligent, holding a master's in computer engineering from Xavier's Institute. Now, that's all about his origin, anatomy, and what his body can do. But because he can imitate powers of others, there's two additional powers that we need to talk about. Let's call these two special mentions. The first one has to be superhuman strength, be it human, animal, or mutant. The second one is flight. So Morph has impersonated Angel on a few occasions and adopted his ability to fly. In fact, he flies in X-Men 97 as well, but that's more of a blink and you miss it kind of scene. It can't be. How does one beat Morph? It must have become abundantly clear that Morph has shown only two kinds of weaknesses. First, we've got his mental trauma. If you put him through some really difficult situations that need a lot of emotional strength, Morph kinda loses his shit. He's already been a victim of PTSD-induced paralysis. Secondly, we know that Morph cannot alter his smell, so that becomes a dead giveaway. But I'm not saying that just because someone knows that a particular individual is Morph, he can be defeated. So what do you think about Morph and the way he has been depicted in the show? Did the creators take the right path by depicting him as a non-binary person just because he's a shapeshifter? I mean, then shouldn't people like Mystique also be considered non-binary, right? But I really want to know what the fans have to say. So yeah, let me know in the comments. The floor is open for a healthy discussion. That's all in this one. But do hang around with us because we're going to explore each episode of X-Men 97 as and when they release. Additionally, we're going to explore multiple facets of the show and everything superhero. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!